I think at a certain level, David thought that he had gotten away with his sin. But God revealed it to a prophet named Nathan. And Nathan went and approached David about this sin. And David, of course, was very humbled by it. But I love what David says after the fact in Psalm 51, verse 4. David writes, against you, speaking of God, and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. Now, don't miss that. Because I have to tell you, the first time I ever read that passage, I'm like, really? <laughs> well, what, what, what about Bathsheba and what about her husband who you essentially had killed? You, you didn't sin against those guys at all? Is that what David is trying to say? David's not trying to say that he had not sinned against them. What he's trying to say is that the big deal was that he had sinned against God. That's one of the points of sin that I don't think you and I get very often. We recognize that we've sinned against our neighbor and we feel badly about that sometimes. We'll often even ask them to forgive us. But how often are we going back to our God and acknowledging to him, as David does here, that we've also sinned against him? Very often times we're not, are we? I want to give you a principle with that today. Sin fails the will of God. That's the problem with most definitions that I hear of sin, is they leave God out of the equation. Now, in the world, that's by design. Do you know why that is? See, because if we leave God out of the equation of what sin is, then I can define what sin is for myself. And it leads to this moral relativism that's very popular in our culture. Well, that might be wrong for you, but who are you to say what's wrong for me? It's a very deliberate attempt to leave God out of the equation. But sin, very specifically, is failing the will of God. That's the point. And that's the most significant point I think we need to have in regards to sin. Sin. 